There are students gathered in the hallway of the school to see the list of top students. They are impressed by a person named Huju Saito who always secures the first position. He is an 18-year-old high school third-year student. He passes by there and notices them looking over the list and does not get what's fun in looking over other people's rank. The things he likes are literature games and protein powder. And what he hates most in school is a girl whom he sees running towards him and reaching to grab his neck. She yells at him about how he secures first even though he does not study at all and she is placed next to him. He tells her to memorize the textbook by going through it as he always does and it works fine for him, but she finds it impossible. It is not how memory works. She is Sakura Mori Akan. He does not have a problem with her face at least. Even though she is a student, but she is a beauty at par with professional models. The troublesome thing is she yells at him out of nowhere for minute things, fights and argues with him, and he is tired of her behavior. One day her friend, Himari, tries to make her understand not to go far, otherwise Saito will start crying and inquire her why she is fighting with Saito. Akane thinks for a bit, makes a horrible face, and says she does not have a reason for it. She wants to hit his face whenever she sees him. Saito is so disturbed listening to it that she does it instinctively. Saito's cousin sister, Shisai, arrives there carrying a book and asks if they are fighting with his brother again. He tells her he is not fighting but being attacked. She comes close to him and head pat to console him. Himari asks Akain if she is giving attention to Saito because she is interested in him. Akan gets furious and says if Satu is the last person in the world, she would not go out with him. Saito also speaks loudly that the same goes for him, he would not go with her ever. Their quarrel is a bit interesting to others. When he is finally free to go home, he receives a call from his grandfather who invites him to have tea for a chat. Saito refuses his offer just because he has a book to read. Grandfather wants him to read it later. He has to come as he will be taking over the company, but Saitu still does not agree to come. It makes his grandfather take a serious reaction saying if Saitu is really smart, he will know better than to refuse an order from his grandfather. Satu sees a luxurious car outside his school, and some men come out with chains to hold Saito. Finally, Saitu agrees to come and sit in the car. The driver and other servants apologize to him that the family head has imposed today and Saitu is the beloved one in the family after all he is going to succeed in the company, unlike his father. When the recession hit in Huju Group 40 years ago, and it was on the verge of collapsing, the grandfather of Saitu, Huju Tenryu, worked hard. And as a result, the Huju Group was reborn as a prominent company in Japan. Even past the age of 60, his mind has not dulled at all. Saito reaches at traditional restaurant cat, stand and sees a cane there, who gets shocked, saying it's a horrible coincidence when she has gotten time to enjoy a meal with her grandmother. Sayutu also agrees with this while reading a book. A cane still shouts at him not to talk to her as she is an attention seeker. They get into serious and loud arguments glaring at each other with hateful attitudes. Soon, Saidu's grandfather and Akane's grandmother arrive there, telling them to hurry up and how long they plan to stand up. Saitu and Akane are confused about if grandfather is referring to them. They enter a cottage where grandfather celebrates a momentary toast with Akane's grandmother and lets Saitu and Akane have orange juice. It is difficult for Saitu to run as guards are standing right after the gates. Satu asks Akane the reason she is drinking juice, since they have come there. She replies that she is hungry, but she has lost her appetite. Satu also accepts that his stomach is contracting because of her. They talk to each other about ending each other's life, but with a fake smile on their face. Grandfather interrupts them, saying they seem very close to each other. They don't get how they do. Satu asks him the reason he has brought him and Akane there. Grandfather utters words telling them to get married. It puts Saitu and Akane in confusion. Saito takes those words wrong and tries to decipher them correctly, but Grandfather says he has listened correctly. Akane also says to Grandmother that they are at high school and young, how they can marry. Grandmother tells her they can marry if they turn 18. Grandfather informs them about the past when he and Chiyo, Akane's grandmother, were young. They were in love with each other, but they never confessed. He got married to Inasuke and made her happy. It has been 10 years since she passed. Chiyo's husband has also died and now Tenryu takes care of her. They have been living life together happily and think if they had gotten married, 
right from the start, it would have been the best life. That is the reason they want their grandchildren to realize the feelings that they could not get. Chio asks Akane menacingly if she would marry for her sake. Akane refuses, saying getting married is about searching for the right person she truly loves, getting proposed romantically, and marrying on her own will. Saiku also refuses that it is not customary in Japan to force someone to get married against their will. The grandparents laugh and Tenryu says they expected this response. They remind him of their days. He commands to bring a dog. If Satu won't do it no matter what, the Huju group will be succeeded by this worthy dog. He has picked a dog for this purpose specifically. It can seal paperwork by having a senior director put ink on its paw and a thumb seal is perfectly legal. Saitu says that before worrying if the thumb seals are all right, a non-human can't even make contracts. Grandfather agrees that if he did that Huju group would be over after he dies. She calls Akane close to her and whispers something in her ear. They give the kids three days to contemplate about it. Akane terrifyingly shivers, and when she and Saitu see each other's faces, Akane confidently shouts again that there is no way, especially a marriage to him. Seitu holds back in terror that his future holds nothing but misfortune. Seitu is dreaming about Akane arguing with him over not marrying him. He wakes up considering it a dreadful morning of life as a girl he despises most in life has shown up in his dream. The reason he had seen it is crystal clear. He has trauma from his grandfather's words. He gets up to get ready for school while thinking that company and marriage are a weird setup. He wants to take over his grandfather's company, no matter what, but having his life partner arranged for him is a big price to pay. Moreover, the one who is going to be his life partner is a cane. Even though just getting tangled up with her in school is troublesome, if he kept arguing in the house, he would go insane. The grandfather has been given three days to thoroughly think about it and give a decision accordingly. It's day one in school. He enters the class and he and Akane see each other. He reaches to him to greet her, but she turns her head away. Seeing them, Saito's sister, Shisai says it's unusual for Saito to try to talk with Akane, and he has been acting strange since yesterday. Saitu runs away with his tail between his legs, saying it's her imagination. Akane is out of class and is reading something. Saitu arrives there to speak, but she turns away again. This time, he speaks up to ask about what Chiyo said her in ears back then. She considers that he has nothing to do with it. Saitu wants her to tell because they both need to know what others are playing cards to threaten them, otherwise they will be forced to accept these unjust terms. She tells him not to look deeply into her heart. She runs away from there after saying it leaving Saitu behind. He feels her attitude is kind of annoying. He thinks they will not be able to build a cooperative relationship from now on. The next day in the classroom, he is still thinking of how to be cooperative with a cane, but the intense glare of Shishe is disturbing him. She is his cousin in grade same as him. They frequently visit each other's home, so she is like a family to him. He does not want her to get involved in marriage issues, otherwise it will become troublesome. After school, he forgets something and comes back to back in class to get it. He listens to Himari talking to Akane about how she missed her calls due to being busy. Saitu hides under the desk in the spur of the moment and finds Shisei there. Akane asks Himari about what she would do if she were forced to marry someone she does not like. According to Himari, there is no way anyone would like to marry against their will, and if it were her, she would turn it down because she likes someone. It's surprising to Akane who asks her about her crush, but she has to keep it secret. She asks Akane if there is someone she likes. Akane gets into thinking, but there is no one so Himari suggests her if she does not like then get married. In this way, her living costs will be split in half. Akane is embarrassed about forced marriage and that they will have to have heirs. Out of embarrassment, Akane runs away from there. Shisai and Satu were listening to the whole conversation. Shisei says he has been acting strange since a day ago and asks the reason for it. He turns his head not telling her the truth, but saying he is not worrying about anything. But Shisei knows him very well. She knows when he thinks and worries. He gets furrows on his forehead. She is worried for him so she won't let it go until he tells her about it. She asks her if grandfather has asked him some unreasonable and confirms it. He tells her that if he wants to become the head of Huju Group, he will have to follow grandfather's orders, otherwise he will put a particularly skilled dog in charge. She say inquires him if wants a life full of freedom or a company. He kind of wants both of these things and she say considers it selfishness. 
True freedom is impossible for living beings. Rather than running away from the rules, it's best to use the rules to his advantage. Shise knows how to realize his dreams and Sei too has to use grandfather's resources. That is the reason she won't stop him. Even though his life was destined to be a thorny path, she will be always there for him. Saitu thanks her for offering her sympathy. He knows a cane would reject the offer given her behavior, but if he has to choose between his freedom and the company, he would choose. The chapter ends with a cliffhanger. It's the third day and students are distributed a questionnaire which is about future plans. The teacher wants to talk to those who wish to change the plans from last year. Saitu and Akan think about their dreams. When leaving for school, they see a car waiting for them to pick up. They arrive at the place where their grandparents are. Tenryu asks them what they have concluded about their decision. Saitu and Akan simultaneously reply to get married. Saitu says he was sure she would reject this offer. She replies while blushing that she had no other choice and she does not like him. The grandparents are pleased with their decision. Now that has settled, Saitu wants to deal with the registry and ceremony once they have graduated from college but the grandparents have their plans. They want the kids to marry now. They take the kids to let them see a new house they have already bought. Akane and Satu are baffled, but Akane is still blushing that she has to live with him without falling in love, confessing, or going out on a date. She is trembling with fear and embarrassed, and they end up staying together in a home. Grandmother knew that the kids had hectic schedules, so she took the liberty of registering their marriage forms so they are a newly married couple now. The grandparents leave the kids behind to live on their own now. They have their study rooms. Seiyu starts unpacking boxes, and when finished, he begins having lunch. Jane sneaks through a door to see him eating. He offers her food to eat together, but she rejects saying she won't act as a married couple with him. She runs away from there taking food with her. Saitu returns to the room and does not find a cane there. He also wants to sleep alone in the room. Tenrisu has given them orders not to sleep on the sofa but on the same bed as a couple. Saitu considers not to underestimate grandfather. He might have set sensors on the bed and it would be no surprise there are hidden cameras in every corner of the house. He finds the suspicious things and puts them into a dustbin. He tries to sleep, but a cane arrives there after taking a bath. She also lays on bed, but being so close to him is embarrassing to both of them. They had not any partners before, so it's new to them. They can feel the warmth of each other on the backside. The time passes, but still, they cannot sleep. He asks her the reason she chose to marry him, but she does not tell him any. She was obligated to marry him, and the same goes for him. It was just a formality, but they have to see it thoroughly. It would be inconvenient if their grandparents suspected them. For the sake of her dreams, she would go to any length to make them true. He considers her to be like him and she has agreed to this marriage to realize her dreams. The next morning, they agree not to talk about marriage to anyone. When Saitu comes to school, Shise becomes suspicious and smells the shampoo fragrance coming out of him. She inquires him that his shampoo smells different and where he stayed last night. He makes an excuse that his grandfather bought him a new shampoo, but she can whiff a girl from him. She gets the situation and asks him if he has gotten married. According to Shise, grandfather and others were acting strange so she knows where he is living and he has married a cane. He hurriedly runs, takes her out, and begs her not to tell about marriage to anyone. She refuses by saying marriage is a big deal, and they should tell everyone about it to celebrate it together. He holds her back. She is unhappy because he had not taken advice from her before getting married. She acts like a child and runs to the butterfly. She demands money from him, but he tells her to think of any other things. She comes to his life that it belongs to her now. He knows her conditions would make him do horrible things. It's football game time and Satato and Akane both are in the same team, but Akane still challenges him that she can't lose to him. They play with meddling in each other's shots. Himari says to Sayatu that he acts very calm and composed during class hours, but when he talks with a cane, he acts like a stupid and silly. The next shot is about him receiving the ball, so he tells Akan to stay aside. Now he has declared that so he cannot mess up. He relaxes and observes the trajectory of the ball coming out of the enemy's court. When he steps up and reaches his arm to receive a ball, Akan meddles in reaching out his arm and gets hit by the leg knee of Saitu. He can't stand her, but does not want to be overwhelmed by emotions if they do. He will lose his mind. He falls on her and tries to check her chin if it is bruised by a hit. 
but she and the crowd around them take it wrong. She gets up and argues with him. The audience says they are at it again. He asks Himari about it. She tells him that they fight often so they have become the center of attention. They act like a married couple who argue with each other. Listening to it, Akane shouts she is not married. Back at home when reading a book, he listens to a Khan screaming. He thinks it would be due to a cockroach, but when he comes to see her, she screams seeing a stack of packed and canned food. He proudly brags that the first shelf is stuffed with vegetable juice and is full of vitamins. Cup noodles are cheap, quick to make and delicious. For the proteins, he has a protein bag containing the necessary proteins. They are the easiest dishes to cook. Seeing the cooking materials, she thinks he will die if he continues to eat them. If he dies, she won't be able to reap anything from this marriage, so she will have to take matters into her own hands. She yells at him saying it's not a cooking but a science. She will show him what cooking is. She wears an apron and starts cooking while humming. She seems excited to him and she says she wants to show him how a better cook she is than him. Still, Saitu does not get why she is pleased while cooking and comes to the conclusion she is poisoning his food. He stares at her with a bombastic side eye and worries if she is going to add unusual things to food and is waiting to catch her when she adds the poison. Akan knows he is staring at her and considers him to be starving. Seeing the new pan, she is pleased to have cooked food in it. She has made dishes and thinks if he eats this dish, he will be amazed and realize how good she is at cooking. He will see the beauty of her abilities, admire her, and thank her from the bottom of his heart. She has never beaten him in school, so it still is a chance to win. On the other hand, seeing how happy Akane is while presenting the dishes Saitu considers them poison dishes and a last meal, he is hesitant to eat. But when he tastes one of the dishes, he finds it normal. Ever since he was a child, he was isolated from his family because he was favored by his grandfather. But at his parents' house, he always had cup noodles and box lunches and at his grandfather's house, they always went to fancy restaurants. That's the reason this carefully prepared normal home cooking is special to him. He tells her it's normal. These words are the words of compliment she has ever received and blushes. But she takes away one dish, saying if he does not like it, then it's better to give it to dogs. He runs after her that it would be wasted, and he does not say it was not good, but she says he did not say it was good either. He snatches dishes from her and starts eating quickly so that when he is served, he does not leave a grain of rice behind. He has finished his dinner and she is furious at him. It's morning and say you double is sleeping. A cane comes to wake him up by tapping on his face, but he thinks she is Shisei. When Shisei was a child, she often used to sneak into his bed and sleep and do something like this on his face. He grabs a cane hand and pulls her towards him saying she can sleep together with him, considering her Shisei. He can smell the scent from a cane that appeals to his instincts. Whereas a cane's is embarrassed, blushing and her heart is pounding hard. She shouts what he is up to. He wakes up after it. He did not think she would come to wake him up. She's there not to wake him up, but to scold him. She scolds him that he had left dishes in the sink without washing them. She cooked last night, so he should be one to wash them. He carelessly replies to leave the dishes as be. They have got plenty of bowls and they can wash them once they have reached up to the ceiling. He has an absurd way of living. He prefers throwing trash after a month, whereas Akane does not agree to coexist with trash. She wants to live a clean and beautiful life and argues with him about the tiniest things like the packaging of soap thrown in the bathroom, even the toilet paper roll being left there. She is extremely tired of his way of living, and he also cannot understand her very well. The stress of two people who hate each other spending time together is immense. To relieve the stress, Seitu begins playing games, which irritates a cane who shouts at him for being loud that she cannot prepare her lessons. He is playing a community-based zombie hunting action game where local specialties are used to defeat the zombies. She cannot see the screen due to gruesome zombie scenes and asks him to turn it off. She runs to turn off the game and he forbids him. If she does, she will waste her hours of playing progress. She does not seem to know what playing progress is and how games work. She proudly says she knows how games like claw machines work and she has won a big stuffed animal. When she is about to plug out the cable from the socket, a doorbell rings for delivery of some package. 
She goes to receive it and tells him to turn it off. It's a package for Saitu from his parents. He thinks they wanted to get rid of his traces from home. He does not care about that place, but it's where he grew up and it's still better than where he is now. When he moves to the bathroom, he sees its lightning turned on and infuriates him how she scolds him when he does not turn off the lights. But here, she is forgetting too. He enters and finds her there taking a bath in a bathtub with eyes closed. He is fascinated by her beauty, but in fear of her anger, he runs away from there silently. When he comes out, he wonders why she did not notice him, even though if just she had closed her eyes. He is worried that if she is unwell while taking a bath, then she must be in bad condition right now. He recalls her face was also a little pale. He enters the bath due to being worried for her if she is even alive. Even though she is her sworn enemy, he cannot leave her to die like this. He gets in the bathroom and checks her and understands that she is fast asleep. He considers himself stupid for worrying, but she is still in a terrible state because there have been accidents where drunk people drown while falling asleep. He is worried about her and takes her out of the tub, but she awakes and fights with him. He tries to explain his point, but she does not listen and yells at him. After the bath, she blows her hair while thinking that she was tired of housework and studying so fell asleep in the bath. He was worried about her and came to save her. She finds herself guilty of yelling at him without even hearing him out. She goes to the bedroom and lies behind Saitu on the same bed. She is about to say something but stops because she is embarrassed as if she should thank him or apologize. He says her to speak what she wants to as he has to sleep. She yells that she does not want to say anything. She cannot bring out her true feelings to him. In school, Akane is tired. She has studied hard, but nothing has gone to her mind. She has mentally reached her limit, but she has decided to work hard for her dreams. She does not intend to abandon and divorce him and is worried about what she should do. Himari arrives there and seeing Akan being concerned about something. She asks her the reason. Akan asks for advice from Himari on how to be friends with a person with whom she does not get along. Himari guesses the person Akan is talking about is Saitu, but Akane is surprised and asks why she would think about him. Himari has always been wondering if Akan is interested in Saitu ever since they became first year. Akane refuses to have an interest in Saitu. She is at her wit's end. She would go sane due to stress when they fight. Himari suggests her to talk out with him to understand how he feels. Getting along with people does not mean that she has to make them respect her. It's about respecting others. Saitu is out with Shisei for lunch, but he is drinking a juice. Shisei inquires him of drinking just juice. He replies her does not feel like eating. He is not able to have a meal in peace at home while fighting with Akan. Shisei says if he is getting divorced, he does not need to worry about it. She is there to take care of him. To him, divorce is out of the question if he runs from this place. Now, there would not be a point in placing his life in his grandfather's hands. He needs to take care of Huju's group as well. Shisei advises him to get along with Akan if he has no option of divorce. People who were born and raised differently are bound not to get along well with each other. Their taste, their way of thinking, and social etiquette all are bound to differ. If he has ever yielded to a cane instead of wanting the things to go his way all the time, they both have to compromise and change themselves if they want to get along. It's important to understand another's feelings while controlling his own. In exchange for her advice, she wants him to carry her like a princess. She carries her and she acts like a baby. When he reaches home, he sees Akane standing right after the door. He gives up on following Shisei's advice and walks past a cane, but she grabs his arm to have a chat with him. He is confused if it's about divorce, but she wants to talk about their marriage and how to get along well and not end up getting divorced. She is blushing out of embarrassment. They sit around the table. She explains if they are going to stay together, they should live pleasantly. Saitu also agrees not to make their lives a living hell. She is worried about how to follow this path. Saitu brings up the set of rules so they don't get stressed by each other. Rules and laws are common denominators to harmonize people who have different values. This, if they agree on something and follow it, they are less likely to be ticked off. She first talks about housekeeping. Even though they are married, she has been doing home since day one. They argue on this topic too. Saitu does chores when they are accumulated. But it is irritating to Akane and in the end, Saitu agrees to wash dishes each time he eats. They discuss other things and have laid all the rules. She inquires him if there is anything left, 
and he adds that he reads in a book, if someone remembers to express gratitude, his relationships with people become stronger. She wants him to show gratitude by eating her dishes and saying it tastes good. No matter how much effort she puts in, if he says it's normal, it just brings down the mood she had while making it. They continue their discussion on dividing housework and other prohibited things in detail while taking into account their needs and wants. He feels they can understand each other a little better if they list the things that are stressing them out. Looking back, ever since the beginning of school, they have always fought and never exchanged opinions, but today they have talked with the same goal in mind, to keep their marriage alive. And they sleep first time without fighting. The next day, he buys a shortcake in hopes of soothing her attitude a little and presents it to her with a lot of confusion as to whether it would be creepy. She asks him how he knows what she likes. He seems to remember her essay where she wrote what she liked. She does not remember the writing, to which he thinks he has messed up. He should not do things out of his comfort zone. Instead of wanting to like him more, he must have made her want to distance him more. She is not talking back and he is confused and suddenly she shows her gratitude by saying thank you. She has a charming smile to which he becomes speechless and blushes. She presents him dinner, which is in Western style. She sits next to him to listen to his reviews. He takes a bite and perceives its taste as delicious. He says it, and her reaction is a pure smile which makes him anxious. After dinner, he begins washing the dishes, and she also comes there to help him even though he was supposed to do it. He suspects her if she is up to something, but she declines saying it would be hard to wash these dishes alone. He thanks her for helping him, and she welcomes him with an appealing smile. He is blushing and stares at her. She asks the reason. He inquires why she is so used to housekeeping. Her parents are all busy, so she did all cooking and cleaning. She even learned how to make curry in her first grade, and that is surprising to say, too. After that, when he reads a book, she brings a CD which she had borrowed. She wants to watch it with him. He knows it's her way to spend time together. They watch it and then play Satu's games and spend time pleasantly, having conversations that are not fighting with her. They don't agonize him. He cannot believe he is having fun with a nemesis. When she is about to go wash plates, Satu stops her from doing it that he would do it so she can go and take a bath. She does not want to take a bath first, so he might peep inside. He clears out her confusion the last time he entered the bathroom to help her, realizing he helped her back then. She thanks him now and runs away. When trying to sleep, Satu sees a cane is uncovered from the sides, so he puts a blanket to cover her. She is awake where he thought she was sleeping. He lays on the bed and says that next time, he will buy a game and movie that she likes. He refers to her saying you. She forbids him not to call her by saying you. When people call her you, she feels like they are mocking her. She wants him to call her by her first name. That is a cane. They call each other's first names and sleep. The following morning, Himari asks a cane if she has made it up with the person. A cane shows her gratitude to Himari that thanks to her advice, she talked out with the person. She had to put a lot of effort into this. Someone calls Himari from another classroom and she goes there. A cane sees an eraser falling. It is of Saitu who is sleeping. She goes to give it back to him and awakes him. He thanks her after taking it. She feels restless whenever he thanks her. Her heart starts beating harder. She has to detest him, but she is feeling something for him that she does not know about. While Akane is on the verge of realizing her feelings for Saitu, we see Himari who talks to herself that she can't just give up on Saitu if Akane does not care about him. Saitu is in the library, searching for a book. She say arrives there and puts her wet hands on his eyes from the back to ask who she is. Saitu knows she is Sasai because the only person who would pester him like this is her. He cleans his eyes and her hands. She observes a book and picks it, which has the title How to Communicate. She gives it to Saitu by saying it's new to her. She never thought he would care so much about his poor communication skills. He tells her he wants to improve his relationship with a cane. It's written in the book that solidarity with others can be enhanced by working together. He goes to a cane and asks her if she is free after school. She has nothing to do as Himari has a part-time job. He offers to meet up after school and go for some shopping. She pauses, processes it, and then gets embarrassed and is about to say something loud. He pulls her away from the spotlight. She yells at him for dragging her into the dark. He has done it because he knew she was going to say the word date. She is blushing that it's not a date, but it's a guy and girl hanging out together. He's to treat it not as a date, 
He calls it just a shopping. They are running out of food anyway, and it will be difficult for him to get groceries by himself. She also agrees with a fake smile that it's shopping. He cannot ask her out on a date. She totally misunderstood her back there. They are sweating and trying to calm down by considering it a shopping, not a date. There is a problem that where they should meet if they meet outside, everyone will get it wrong. There is no love between them. They are just married. They decide to meet at the back gate where only teachers park their vehicles. Then they get free from school. Akane goes first towards the gate where Himari has got a job so no one will stop her but suddenly Himari calls her from back, saying to go home together. It drops Akane's jaws making her surprised. Himari's shift got cancelled. She has not hung out with a cane for a long time. It's a perfect time for them. There is a limited menu out, later in a cane's favorite parfait shop. Akan is confused about what to do next. Parfait is tempting to her, and she will not get a chance to get it another time, but she has already promised Sato to go out with him. Akani apologizes that she has got plans with someone else, and it's the one Himari knows about. Himari guesses the person with whom Akan is close might be Sato. She asks Akane if she is going to date Satu. Akane declines that it's not a date. Imari is relieved and wants to go out with them as three. It puts Akane into thought that if these there will go out, it will be different from going just two of them. There must be the reason that Saitu asked for both of them to go shopping. Akane runs from there apologizing to Himari and saying she will pass out this time. When running, she steps on Shisei who is lying on the floor. Akane picks up her and asks the reason she is doing on the floor. Shisei was waiting for Akan, so made a small trap for her. Shisei wants Akan to choose one from her options, whether it will be world domination, copying sutras, or exterminating Bulger. Shisei is imaging Akan with Saitu to draw all these options, but Akane does not get why she has to choose and why all of this is happening to her right now. Akan runs from there, saying she has got important things to do. She finally escapes to the outside gate and waits for Saitu. Knowing they are going shopping, Akan tries to make herself understand that it's not a date because she is worrying about her appearance and wants to look good in front of Saitu. Saitu walks to come at back gate while thinking if Akan did not like the idea of going out shopping and went home already. He has no hopes after all he will go shopping with a girl. He hates most in class. He is sure it will wear him out mentally and there are high chances of fighting but wonders why he feels like he wants her to wait for him. He sees a cane standing there and flowers blooming around them. They go out to a place near a cane's home where she always goes. It is kind of untidy and old, but people come there. The owners don't spend money on renovations, but they do keep the place clean and neat. The stuff there is cheap, so it's popular with housewives near her home. When going there, Seiyu starts putting stuff in the cart randomly and Akane forbids him by telling him to check the prices of eggs and other items. The eggs he has grabbed are expensive ones. She carries an egg tray and teaches him that these eggs are known as prizes among prices that are always cheap and fit perfectly in the household. It will be a waste to buy expensive eggs. She puts the expensive items back on the shelves. She picks two similar items and calculates the price difference. Saitu is not considerate of even the smallest price differences, but Akan is because if he is going to be lenient with money, he won't be able to live a good and prosperous life. According to Saitou, Akane takes everything too seriously. He is afraid she will get worn out if she keeps being particular about everything. They see a crowd of women in front of a meat shop that is selling a pack of chicken breasts for 50 yen. Saitu does not want to get involved and say to her that they have meat at home so they don't need to buy it. But Akane becomes enthusiastic as a typical household woman about buying it when it is this cheap. She will freeze it when they get back home. When the shopkeeper rings a bell for the meat service, all the women rush to get it. But Akane returns after being beaten up by those women with nothing but a price board. Trying to sympathize with her, Sayu decides to get meat in another sale with the perspective that middle-aged women would not push around a schoolboy but those women stare at him with a fierce look and say it's not a place for a kid. The bell rings and women stomp over him. As a result, both are left beaten up and lying on the ground. Seeing each other's condition, they start laughing at what they are even doing. They stand up and while giggling, a cane says they will win next time. Satu says he will pass out next time, but Akan says to him with a charming smile that he will next time with her again. 
When coming back home, he appreciates her that she is good at shopping like this. She asks him while pouting that if he is referring, she is stingy. He declines by saying she will be a great wife. She looks at him and blushes that they are already married. Seituyu also starts blushing and they both turn their heads to other sides. He can feel his body burned up and they both walk home unable to make eye contact. The next morning when Saitu wakes up, he finds a cane sleeping with her head on his chest. He is shocked that she herself said if he touches her, she will break his finger. She clenches his shirt and he does not want to move if he does, she will wake up. They are very close to each other. He considers her cheeks very white and soft like marshmallow. He pokes her skin and she awakes but sleeps again on him. Soon she awakes with a surprise and pulls back by saying to him that he is going to attack while she is sleeping. He tries to clear her misunderstanding that he did not do anything else. He was waking her up. She does not believe him and asks him about it with an intense glare. He knows he won't get away with it if he does not apologize. So he bends her head and says that she was cute when she was sleeping so it made him touch her face. She is surprised at being called cute and asks him how cute she is. He blushes and says if it was more, he would have lost it. She has a pillow and lays back so that he can see her sleeping face a little more. They have hearts pounding so hard that it's difficult to sleep, but they sleep. When the clock rings, they rise up with calm smiles and greet each other with morning gratitude as they are newly weed couples, although they are. Seitu goes to the washroom to refresh and Akane goes to make breakfast. Seitu listens to Akane's screaming in the kitchen that they have no rice cooked and have forgotten to make reservations. She also had burnt bread when she was in confusion. He asks her what's the matter with her today. She looks weird. She says it's not strange to be a talented person and asks him in return why he is not wearing his shirt. He brings its shirt and says her to give up on making breakfast. They both look strange, but there is a danger that the whole house will be burned down. She agrees and adds more to her weirdness that she was going to iron her shirt, but she put butter on it. He makes her sit on a crouch that he is going to clean up and goes to the kitchen by saying they are already late for school. They go out to school without having breakfast. While passing by a bakery, Akane's sight falls on the bakery shop. He asks her if she is hungry, and she agrees but they don't have time as they are going to be late for school. He goes to buy some really quick. She won't be able to study on an empty stomach. He buys her a strawberry cream pastry, but it's a big one. She won't be able to eat this much. He gives her half of it, and she tastes it. According to her, the cream tastes like it has red food coloring mixed in it, and one really cannot have a real taste of strawberry. The one who developed it must not have had a love for strawberries. He plunges to get back pastry from her, so that if she is going to be picky, then she doesn't have to eat it. She does not want to hand it over to him. It has been hers since the moment he gave it to her. While walking, he also takes a bite of pastry, and on asking about its taste, he agrees with a smile that it sure is lacking. He considers it a good time, sharing some cheap pastry and critiquing it while walking. It's night, and Saidu comes out of the toilet and sees a cane study room lighten up. He goes there and asks her what she is doing this late at night. She tells him she is studying for an upcoming quiz. She hopes to learn everything it covers. Recently, they have not been fighting as much anymore, so he has begun to understand her feelings, the way she thinks, and her strong point, which is how hard she works. He is not concerned about quizzes, and says to her that who else care about quiz? One has to get good grades in exams. She reminds him of how he secured good grades on a quiz the other day. He brags about his learning skills that he worked out the answers and happened to get good marks. He did not study for it. He just remembers each thing they are taught. Forgetting is harder for him. Listening to his conversation, Akane begins crying as if he is being sarcastic to her, trying to say she is foolish for studying this hard. Seiyu tries to take his words back by saying it must be hard to study, but Akane pushes him out of the room. He had let his guard down because things had been going smoothly between them, and yet he still does not know what she hates and upsets her. They both worked hard to get to this point, and if it continues, they might start fighting with each other. He thinks of a way to cheer her up and recalls that she likes strawberry cake. He knocks on her door to have her late-night snacks. 
He presents the strawberry sandwich to her with the thought in mind that she will reject it, but she is surprised to see and seems suspicious that he is scheming by just making it for her. He denies he is not scheming, but she does not believe him how come he would do something nice with her, even though she just yelled at him. He thrashes the sandwiches on her hands. It's normal sandwiches. She can eat them or throw them away if she does not want them and goes to his room. She enters the room and puts aside the sandwiches. But the sandwiches are appealing to her. She finds it strange and does not believe how he is being nice that she yelled at him and yet he made her a snack. She takes one sandwich to have just a bite and its taste, makes her eat all of it, realizing it does not have sleeping pills and protein powder. She thinks of Saitu and wonders if he made it because he knew she liked strawberries or it was to make up with her. A strange feeling arises in her chest that it's warm. It tickles and she does not seem to calm down and it's not a bad feeling. She regains her energy to prepare for the quiz. She can study all night now. Kane walks with Himari to get lunch from the cafe, but she dozes off on the way. Himari advises her not to stress about her studies. She looks pale and totters around all day, but Akan is determined to be first in her grade if it takes her body ground to pieces. Himari refuses that her body is more important than her grades, and it's not like she will be able to beat Saito. Akane says she won't beat Satu, and it makes Himari confused and shocked but Akane enthusiastically says that she will do whatever it takes to beat him. She does not care if it takes several years. She will make Sato admit that she is superior. Saitu passes by there and Akane points her finger at him, telling him to be prepared. While eating strawberry pancakes, Himari and Akane continue their conversation. Himari says that she cannot study this much day after day and ends up watching videos. Akane is embarrassed while telling Himari that she does not dislike studying. Besides, she has got someone to support her now and make late night snacks. Himari is surprised to know if Akane has a boyfriend or if it's her parents. Akane rejects that it's not what Himari is thinking. Himari concludes and says she has found out and Akane makes a horrible face. Himari has concluded the supporting person is a maid. Akane agrees that it is a perfect guess they have hired maids at home. Akani did not ever imagine it would be Saitu helping her out, and she wants to make sure his efforts don't go to waste. She studies late at night, and Saitu observes her. One night, he brings strawberry cake to her room and sees she is passionately studying. She stayed up late at night till three other days. She should sleep at 12 by tonight. She is determined to finish two pages and then go to sleep. He feels like there is a point where studying too much ends up hurting a person. He would not have a hard time if she is someone who listens to him. Every day, she studies late at night and one night. When comes to her, he observes she is heading down instead of studying. He comes to her and observes she is flushing reg. He checks her head and finds out she has a fever. He takes her to their room and checks her fever, which it's up to 40 degrees, which is pretty much bad. He gives her medicine for fever and she becomes sweaty. He does not have experience with how he should deal with this circumstance. He tries to comfort himself that here he is talking about a cane who would not die if someone beats her. The time passes and she still does not seem relieved. Instead, her breathing has become rougher. The fever medicine has not worked on her, which makes him wonder if she has a serious illness. Even in such a condition, she wants to keep studying. Sayu makes her understand that it has happened to her because she kept studying. She stays up late at night, but it does not mean she has to push herself. She talks about her dream, which she has to achieve by working hard. She wants to become a doctor who can immediately help someone if they are suffering. She wants people she loves to be healthier, but they do not have that much money to let her go to medical school, and her grandma said she would pay her all expenses. He takes it as her dream. Adults would probably laugh at it, but to a cane, a dream is worth devoting her life to. Even if it means giving up one very aspect of life and emotions, in such a way Sayu considers himself and her both alike. She calls him lucky that he can fool around and still get good marks, but no matter how much she tries, she still cannot beat him. He considers it a matter of talent, and it is what she hates most but also admires. She comes to her senses and asks him if he has listened to what she has said. Out of embarrassment, she says, she does not admire him but hates him. He wonders if she admires him. She shouts due to uneasiness, and he checks her fever that she is burning even more. 
When he is about to call for an ambulance, she tells him that an ambulance is for people whose lives are actually in danger. A simple fever just means it's cold. If someone dies because the ambulance comes over for her, she won't be able to forgive herself. He calls for a taxi, but some don't respond and some are busy. It is a 10-minute bus ride closest to the hospital willing to take in nighttime visits, but the buses are not running now. She does not want him to worry about her. He has to go to school tomorrow. He does not listen to her and carries her in his arms. How did he leave his wife suffering? He runs to the hospital carrying her. He feels her legs and arms thin almost like glass and she has a small body that always picks fights with him. She's always overflowing with energy and so strong-willed that he cannot help but see her as bigger than she is, but in reality she is so fragile. They had never talked about their dreams or future plans, but now he is finally starting to see who really a Cain is. If he had lost her now, everything would have ended with him still ignorant. If her story ended after just one page, he would be wondering about the rest until his life ended. He truly desires to know more about her. We see Saitu is sleeping and a cane comes to wake him up, but he does not get up. He says while sleeping that he will take one month off from school. To wake him up, Akane comes to Saitu and says close to his ear that if he does not wake up now, she will resort to Pan. It terrifies him and he gets up with a terrible face to see Akane smiling and greeting him. It has been a week since that night and Akane is back to her annoying self, but he feels more at ease when she is around him like this. They return to their argument on small things like Saito did not wash his face yesterday because it was raining and he thought it would wash his face. She goes to make breakfast and says it's normal for people to wash their faces. Sai too acts as if he is shocked by the fact that if he stopped being human, he would not need to wash his face. She acts cocky that he may be good at studying, but he is completely useless when it comes to other things. Saitu's eyes sparkle, and he asks her if she has any right to say these things to him. She does not get what he is supposed to mean. He smirks, reminding her of what Akane said of him being her admiration. She gets embarrassed and says that she did not mean it, she was just hallucinating. He teases her on the scene, he has even recorded it on his mobile phone. It infuriates her, she wants to throw him and mobile into a volcano. He was trying to calm down the things around, but it ended up even more rowdy than normal. She sneaks him in the bathroom when he is washing his mouth. He clears her confusion that he was joking around about the recorded thing. She is there to ask him what dressing he wants for salad. He tells her what he wants, and she goes away, saying to him to get ready so he can eat it. When Sai Tu enters his class, Shisi comes and sniffs him to know if he attracts any women. She gets the sense of breakfast he had, and she concludes he is dating with fried eggs and bacon. He asks her if she has skipped breakfast, but she has not. Listening to it, the other girls bring Shisei with them to have her breakfast. Seitu comes out of class and meets with Himari who greets him. He finds her cheery as usual. She has heard from a cane. He got a perfect score on yesterday's test. She considers him smart and herself an idiot, and she really look up to him. He shows his thumb up and tells her to revere him, too. She calls him quirky and smart at studying, but it does not look like he understands anything, and he is pretty dense. She gets close to him, making him blush. Akane seems to observe them from afar. Himari asks him if he is blushing, and he defies it that he is not, and she goes away saying she is joking. Ikane walks to him with an intense glare and it terrifies him. She grabs his shirt and timidly says that he has already a wife and he cannot go and get along with another girl. They both blush. At first glance, it looks like they are back to how things used to be, but it's not that. She is acting strangely. She goes to her class embarrassingly. Himari asks her if she is free so they can go to the cafe again and Ikane agrees. Back there, Sayu's heart also throbs. He cannot help but think his wife is cute. In the morning, she presents him breakfast and asks him what he thinks of it. He thinks it's on a different level than what anyone can expect from a normal breakfast. She tries to make him admit that he acknowledges that has already lost to her and is ready to submit to her. He thought the cute side of her had started peeking out of her, but it may have been his imagination. He asks her what she meant back then when she told him not to get along with another girl. He was wondering if there was a particular meaning behind it. A bowl is dropped out of her hands out of embarrassment. She also does not why she said it. She tries to clear him out that if grandma had seen him with another girl, they might have lost all the money they got for their marriage. He is such an idiot that he does not get what she meant and believes what she said about grandma. In school, he sees a cane running to him 
and he thinks it's his death time, but Akanis brought him a lunchbox, which he had forgotten on the table. She cutely says that she had put her efforts into making it so he would better eat it. He agrees with her and admits that the destructive power her face holds is enough to blow away the fact she is her natural enemy. They walk together to the class. She informs him of the egg sale in the supermarket. He does not get why they have to live saving pennies even though they are living on their grandparents' money. She says if they are adult, he will have to live off his money. He compliments her that she is earnest. They reach near to class and she says to him they are strangers from here. At lunch break time, Shisai arrives at Saitu and asks for his lunch. He pulls it away from her that she must have a ridiculous amount of breakfast. And if she has not brought her breakfast, she has brought but she wants to eat one made by and is about to say beloved wife. He makes her stop and asks her not to speak about it in class. She makes a begging pose of wanting his lunch and it makes their classmates crazy. They call him an atrocious beast for not spare a little for her. In a pinch, he looks at Akane and raises a finger in order to ask her if he can give her one bite, but Akane does not understand it. Himari comes close to his lunchbox and observes that it is the same as of Akane lunch. It drops the jaws of both Satu and Akane. He tries to answer her calmly about how it can happen if she is sure she is imagining things. Himari is not sure about it. The sides are lined up differently, but the content is the same as of a cane. It surprises all the others and wonder if Akan has made lunch for Satu and if they are dating. Akane yells that they are not dating. Satu also agrees with her, but inwardly, they think they are married. The others don't believe them and find it suspicious that they both fight as a married couple. Others want to compare the lunch boxes of both, but they find Satu's lunch empty as Shisie has eaten it all. They disperse afterward, and Shisei wants him to thank her for removing the evidence. In an empty classroom, Saitu and Akane discuss about what happened. Akane says she was careless. Himari has always been perspective about things. In any case, they can't let others know that they are living together. She shivers and says that if everyone finds out they are married, they will flip out, and she is not sure what going to happen to the school record on us. They decided to eat at the cafeteria for the time being. If the people find their lunches the same for more time, then they both won't be able to lie their way through it. The worst possibility would be if they found out they were living together. Suddenly, they listen to some students and Himari outside of class. They both hide under the teacher's desk and are very close to each other. The students are there to pick up the chairs and desks. Both listen to them about carrying the teacher's desk and do not want to be seen like this. The rumors of them dating would spread throughout the whole school like wildfire. They are scared and worried. When a boy is about to pick the desk, Himari tells him that this teacher's desk is pretty heavy, so just use the one in the next class. The students leave the class, and finally, they both come out of the teacher's desk. They decide to leave the room one by one after some time. After A. Kane goes first, Seitu exits the class and plans to take a detour just to be safe. He notices Himari, who comes down to him and is about to trip but manages to handle herself. He warns her not to run on the stairs. She says she would have been fine as she knew he was there to help her. But he makes a careless face and says that he won't do it and dodges with everything he has got. It reminds her and asks him if the lunch is really not made by a cane. He lies to Himari that he has told her they just happen to have the same lunch, though he can see a cane wanting to try and copy him on that front. She asks him again with the interrogative point of view if he is sure they are not dating. He admits to that fact and it makes her pleased. She apologizes to him for asking a strange question and will make sure to clear up this with everyone. She leaves him behind and he sighs that she is popular and everyone would believe her. His peaceful life is back now. While having lunch, Himari inquires a cane about Saitu if she likes him, and Akeon makes a questioning face. Seitu is on the couch, reading a book in a quiet room, and he can feel that someone is watching him and is getting closer to him. It's like a horror scene, and it's making him crazy. Suddenly, Akan appears before him, pointing a pen toward him. She has a notepad, to which he asks her what she is doing. She wants him not to mind her and continue what he was doing, but he does mind. She makes fun of him and calls him a professional monkey that they keep living in the zoo as they normally do without getting embarrassed, and he should be proud to be a professional monkey. 
She is there to observe Saitu and his activities. The scene shifts to the time when she was with Himari for lunch. Himari asks Akan if she likes Satu, and Akani declines she does not think about him much. If only he was not out there, she would be a topper of their class. Akani asks her the reason for asking it, and Himari confesses that she likes Satu. Akane does not get what's good about Satu, and Himari likes everything about him. She first started noticing him when they were in an athlete's meet. One of her friends collapsed from a heat stroke. The nurse was nowhere to be found, and everyone started panicking, but Satu took action on time. Normally, he remains quiet, but he was cool back then like king. That's what is good about him. One can depend on him, unlike other guys. Akane seems to agree with this fact by recalling her scene when she had a fever and Satu took action. Himari adds that she has no self-confidence, so she can't help but look up to say too. Akan also agrees with this fact. He is surprisingly so kind. He is normally so blunt. But whenever he realizes she is down, he always gives her a candy and asks how she is doing. Akan feels frustrated that Himari knows a lot about Sei too. Love affairs and the sort were always stuff from a different world from hers. Himari wants help from Akane, as she and Seiyu get along well and Himari hopes she can help her out with this. Akane yells that they don't get along well, it's not as much talking but getting mad at him. To Himari, Akane and Shisei are the only ones Saitu talks to normally. Himari requests that Akane help her by making Saitu fall for her. Akane pauses and thinks that she has no reason to say no. Their marriage was just a name. They had no choice but to live together for their dreams. Not only can she not see a future where she actually likes him, but it is not her place to dictate his love life. And most of all, she would do anything for her best friend. Akane passionately agrees to help her but she does not know how to. Himari wants to know more about Sai too, and what are his likes and dislikes. Akane wonders that she is living with him, but she barely knows about it. The scene shifts to the present where she is after Saitu taking a notepad. Saitu runs to his study room, avoiding her. He can feel bloodlust from her. He had thought he had begun to understand Akane's feelings, but he was being conceited. He looks out from the window and sees Akane there stalking him. While eating dinner, she makes a film of him right in front of him. She asks him what type of girls he likes. He is baffled upon hearing it and thinks if she is interested in him, but he considers a cane to be the last person to be interested in him. He tells her that he does not have any preference. She makes a disgusting face that any female works for him, even if it's a guppy. But he is shocked at how he can see guppy as a female. She inquires him about what he likes to eat. He tells her about different luxurious dishes and Akane finds him extravagant despite being a student. It's not like he would get those by himself. His grandpa used to take him to places. After elementary school graduation, grandpa dragged him into a helicopter for some kind of graduation party. He recalls a girl and his time with her when he had fun at a boring party. He was engrossed in conversation with her to ask her name and she had an angelic smile. Akane inquires him more about his favorite food, and he wonders if she is going to make his favorite dishes so he can't wait for tomorrow to see what she makes. Akane brags to Himari about knowing what Saito is like. He does not like girls who look like guppies. According to research, guppies have healthy bodies with high fertility. He also likes raw meat and garlic. Himari seems thankful to Akane, and this much information is enough. For her. At home, Akane seems upset and tells Saitu to clean the bathroom while she prepares dinner. He is surprisingly glad and asks her what she is going to make. When he listens, she is going to make fish. He makes a gloomy face. She asks him if he is expecting her to make something. He agrees that she asked him about details of side dishes he enjoys having with steaks, so he thought she was going to make something he liked. She did not expect it. Desiring food is not unpleasant and she does not hate it. She loudly says that he has has a childish side which she did not expect. He denies it but she teases him that he is even disappointed when she is not making food he likes. She agrees to take the responsibility of making steak for him. She decides to go and buy ingredients for the steak. He also gets up to go with her as it's already dark and it's not safe for a girl. She gets embarrassed about why he is treating her like a girl now and what he is planning to do with her. Sato drools over thinking about steak. He is not planning something. He is worried for steak. He would feel miserable if it did not come back. While walking together through a street, she tells him what she feels now. She truly enjoys this period. It gives her a nostalgic feeling and reminds her of the time when she was little looking forward to dishes her mom made. Say too is against it. 
He does not it at all. This world has got nothing to do with him. They see a man smoking outside a building. A cane goes to him and pinpoints to the signboard saying, no smoking and yells at him that cigarettes are not only for smokers, but the smoke also affects the people around it. This place has a lot of customers bringing their children. That man threatens a caning and says it's his business, not hers. While she is arguing with that person, Saitu notices Akani's leg shaking. A cane and the person shout at each other, and when he raises his hand to her, Saitu stops him and threatens that if that person touches this girl, he and his family will be ruined. Listening to it, that person runs away with a tail between his legs. They enter the mall where he waves her arm saying, if it was just a little more, she could have knocked out that thug inside you should not have done anything. Datu apologizes to her. He had jumped in because he saw someone shaking. She declines him that she was not trembling but inwards thinks it is the cool point of his. Instead of thanking him directly, she shouts that she will give it all in preparing steak and he smiles. She presents him dishes, and he finds them so professional. She was serious, so making it was a piece of cake for her. He takes a bite and fills in its flavor. Compared to the delicious grilled outer layer, the inside meat is soft as jelly, and when bitten, its juicy flavor spreads to the throat. He demands more meat and makes faces. She asks him if it's bad and he replies it's terrible but in a good sense. She does not get it and asks him with a worried face if he wants to vomit in good sense. He wants her to stop about it while having dinner. He always appreciates her but cannot get across it to her. She tells him if he wants to throw up then do it later. She worked so hard to make it. He takes a bit of another dish. He can feel the tenderness of the squid as his teeth dig into the meat as he chews it apart, it is as if the ocean tides are washing over him. The rice grains carry the smooth feeling of olive oil filled with sea extract. He raises a spoon of that dish and she informs him about it, that she had put diced beef from the curry in it. She thought he would be happier if she also put beef in seafood. Her concern about suiting his taste satisfies him, although his grandfather had him eat the same dish in the restaurant, but it was filled with ingredients he was not satisfied with. But Akinese's dish is different. It is not convenient food aimed at satisfying the masses, but something that is specially made for him. He asks her about the soup placed next to him, and she calls the soup with the name Aho Aho means stupid. When she went online to search for soup that would go with that dish, she had found its recipe. She had thought in mind that if she let Sadhu drink this soup, his brain would surely regress and the top position of grad would go to her. She compels him with sparkly eyes to drink it all, and he somehow gets it. She wants his intelligence to drop. He drinks it and immerses himself in the taste of the soup. It has bread held together by eggs and chopped vegetables with peppers adding more taste to it. He enjoyed the steak and another dish along with soup. The soup contains garlic and he informs her that garlic is called ajo in Spanish. It shocks her and embarrassingly says that she knew its meaning. He knows she was aiming to lower his intelligence. She is sweating and says she was teasing him since she knew the meaning and he believed it. She makes a pout and he smiles at her. She asks him if he can eat whole without vomiting. He considers her an idiot but thinks if he says it, she would get angry and understand that the only way for a cane to understand his gratitude was for him to speak words of praise honestly. He was not able to say it so he said to her that everything on the table was delicious. She misinterprets him that he wants to throw all the food on the table in the trash because he considers it messy. He shouts back that she misheard him. He was trying to say her food is more delicious than professional chefs. She cannot believe he is complimenting her and asks him if it's a trap. He replies that it's on that level where he wants her to cook it for him every day. There is a sudden silence. She trembles and asks him if he is saying, please marry him. He also gets embarrassed and blushes. He did not mean it, but it was a kind of proposal in the Showa era. She smiles back at him charmingly that he has finally realized how talented she is. As with her masterful cooking, she will make him as many dishes as he wants. She comes close to him and asks if anything he wants her to cook. She will feed him with his heart content tonight. He speaks that they are very close, but she pulls back saying she thought he would not be able to listen to her if he is that far away. He requests for more steak, knowing he might say that she has already stocked up on meat. 
She takes out a huge meat slab, which looks unappealing to him. She bought it back when she said she had forgotten her stuff and went back to the supermarket. He says that they can eat for a month, but she wants to finish it by tonight. It was 90% off and it's going to expire, so she plans to have Saitu eat it all today. She will minimize food loss and protect the Earth's environment at any cost. Saitu makes a frightful face. His fleeting opinion of her being cute is nowhere to be seen, but now considers her a demon. He tries to run away, but she grabs him from carrying a knife, making a horrific scene. She will make him a lot of dishes as he likes and won't let him sleep. He shouts for help. Seiyu cannot sleep at night and crawls in bed with abdomen uneasiness. He considers her a devil and wants to bring strawberries if something goes wrong. He will throw them at her and run. She gets up and brings him back to his place. She feels sorry for feeding too much steak. She looks back and shouts seeing a shadow lurking behind them. He asks the reason and she terrifyingly tells him that she saw a ghost. He sees there and finds nothing. She is still terrified. She saw a pale white face muttering some nonsense she could pick up. He does not believe her and gets back to his place to sleep. She wants him to get up and don't leave her alone. He randomly answers her that she is not alone. Mother Nature and everybody in the world are giving her their strength. She does not want him to give her such answers. If they don't keep their eyes open, the ghost will come closer. He knows there are no rules like that and tells her to sleep, but she is frightened to the extent that she won't sleep and neither will let him. If he has even a sense of danger, what does he plan to do if a ghost takes his soul? She is in panic mode but say to is in calm and careless mode. He gets up and writes a note on a book, Evil Spirit Be Gone, and lets her have it, calling it an effective charm, and gets back to sleep. They listen to a sound coming out of the room, and she holds on to him. He wants to check it out, but she begs him to stay there with her. He does not go thinking that she may forget about it the next day. The following day, she again runs to him and informs him about the ghost that she heard footsteps in the living room. He gives her the idea to take pictures now as proof. She is scared that she will be haunted and her mobile phone will explode. She starts studying there in his room. Afterward, she follows him and he goes into the house. For a while, she tells him she is going to take a bath and Saitu relives that he can finally get some peace. But she stands at the door front, asking him to join her as it would be dangerous alone. He goes here and sits next to the door while Akane takes a bath. He has the urge to peep at her, but he controls himself. Saitu informs about the ghost thing. The next morning that Akane is talking about ghost appears in the home. She is saying someone occasionally standing next to her or she can hear footsteps. He has not seen himself. He is sure it's a rat, but Akan does not listen to him. Shisa believes it can be a ghost, even if it's not a ghost or something, but he should not leave it alone for too long. Shisa and Sao to go to Akane, where Shisei admits that she knows they are married. Akane strangles Saito's neck for telling Shisei about their marriage. Shisei explains all of their family members know it, so it's hard to hide it from her. Akane apologizes to Shisei for not letting her know about their marriage. Shisei starts a conversation about ghosts that she heard from Saitu there is a ghost plaguing their house. Akane accepts it and adds that Saitu does not even believe in ghosts and stuff. Shisei tries to make Akane believe that she gets what Akane is afraid of. And that house is haunted by evil spirits. She can feel unfathomable energy coming out from both Akan and Saitu. Akane manages to withstand the evil spirit's attempt at encroachment because her will is strong. Shisei acts like an adult with humor, whereas as Akane acts like a crying baby. Shisei wants Akane to believe her and let her look into their house and know what's going on there and how to deal with it. Akane believes her being in dire help of someone. Saitu whispers in Shisei's ears that don't say Akane to believe her. What if she actually believes? But it is actually the plan of Shisei if she makes people believe Shisei is an exorcist and declares there are no ghosts in the house. It will be effective. The trio reaches to front of the house. Shisei observes it and randomly says countless spirits are crowding and this house will soon sink into the underworld. Saitu knows she is exaggerating, but Akane is scared. They enter the house and Akane asks for help from Shisei who replies that she will locate the spiritual presence from here and identify the central 
central of spiritual disturbance. By destroying it, she will scatter spirits. Shise goes to the refrigerator that she is sensing spiritual energy there. She takes out a dish that is haunted and the whole family gets sick, but there is a solution. Shisai has resistance to spirits so she will eat it all. Seitu natched the dish box from Shisei Ai saying that she just wanted it. Akani pinpoints the finger to the living room. She had heard running sounds there yesterday. Shisei wants to interrogate more to get to a conclusion and goes to the Saitu study room. There might be erotic scenes in the book that Satu reads that can be guessed when Saitu quickly closes the book when Saitu, Akan and Shisei enter the room to search erotic books and confiscate them. Saitu makes them understand these are not erotic books but normal novels. When they come out study room, Sayu whispers and asks Shisei about what is in his room. Shisei replies with an intense glare that it is better for beginners and amateurs to not know when it's clear. It also puts Saitu in confusion. They enter the room where Akane and Saitu sleep. It's dark and raining outside and they can feel cold. Akane tells her if she were sleeping, there would be a shadow standing by her pillow. A small sized shadow appeared, and when she raised her voice quickly, it disappeared. It clicks Shisei's interest. Seitu tells Akane that despite Shisei's appearance, she is sharp witted, and her brain cells are calculating all possibilities. If it is Shisei, then he can believe the truth can be revealed. Despite his truth about Shisei, she says that the true identity of the ghost is Shisei. It leaves Akane and Saitu confused and disturbed. They wonder what it means. Location and timing of ghost timing, inference based on behavioral patterns. The ghost is Shisei, because she has been coming to this house for playing past few days. Saitu stretches the cheeks of Shisei to tell them what it means. Shisei asked for keys from Grandpa, and he gave them to her right away. She entered the house without telling them because she thought she should not disturb the lovey-dovey night of the newlywed couple who were spending time together. Now Shisei wants to have dinner as a reward for handling the token incident and successfully resolving the incident. She had a homemade lunch made by a cane before and wants to taste a cane's meal. A cane presents dishes to Shisei, and she eats them and enjoys them. She will be staying for a night, as it's already late. Seitu treats her like a kid sister, cleanses some food on her face, and she also cleans it back from his face. But to a cane, they are going too far, and she does not like it. The cane does not like Seitu cleansing Shisai's face, and Saitu notices her. He wonders if she is angry over Shisai's eating manners and tells Shisei to fix her manners even food is delicious. Since Shisei is going to stay, she wants to play with Seitu and asks for a certain horror game, but he does not play it anymore, as Akani is not good with horrific moves. He has a cat game he recently bought because he was thinking of playing it with the cane. Shirosei is sitting over Seitu's lap, considering a little sister. They play games with Saitu's hands over Shisei's when holding a controller. It makes a cane jealous and she shouts at them. Saitu gets up to take a bath, and Shisei also wants to go with him. A cane stops them that Shisei is the same age as them. When a cane and Saitu are finally in the room alone, Akane says that they have gotten time to talk alone. They have given a bed and game to Shisei. He asks her if she wanted to talk alone, but she gets embarrassed and says that's not what she meant. She has a lot of complaints to talk about, and it is hard to say in front of Shisei. He does not get it and thinks that normally she gets to fight with Shisei when in school. He agrees to listen to complaints. She tells him he forgot to take out the trash this morning, and he should have told her about the cat game since he bought it. He makes sure to throw out the trash next time, and she looked busy. That's why he did not bother her. She adds that she wanted to play the game first before she say. He misinterprets her emotions and says if she wants to be good at the game first to beat them later. It frustrates her that she does not want to play with him anymore and his grades are annoyingly good. After that argument, Akan finally feels refreshed. He inquires if there were just these complaints, and she replies there is one about Shisei. He apologizes for letting Shisei stay, but it's not what she meant. She doesn't get how to say it, but says with a pout that he is paying so much attention to Shisei when he is with her. He cannot understand her complaint that Shisei is the type who would pick a rock beside a road to eat if one left her alone. She is about to sleep while thinking why she is complaining in the first place. Suddenly, Shisai appears there shocking a cane. Satu has slept. Shisei says to a cane that she can get jealous when Shisei is flirting with Satu. 
Akan rejects that she is not jealous, but Shise considers it a lie. She tried to stop her when she was going into the bathroom with Sei Tuyu. Akan stopped her because a boy and a girl of the same age taking a bath together was weird. Akan can't fool her eyes. Sei Tu is dull. He cannot get it, so she wants Akan to say it to his face. Akan is blushing and yells at her asking what she wants her to say then. Shisai seems relieved that she was really worried if Satu could live there happily and after saying she gets into Akane's bed to sleep with Satu. Himari wakes up Satu in school when sleeping on the desk that class is already over. He thanks her for letting him know. She got information that he does not like hot girls. He asks her who informed about it to her but she does not tell him to keep it a secret. She inquires him if the one he falls in love with is his type, and he tells her humans are not really simple. One cannot fall in love with them unless someone really knows them. Falling in love with someone by their appearance is a childish thing to do. She appreciates his way of thinking. The ones who confessed to her did not her very well. He gets that beautiful people have it hard and it makes her blush. She teases him that he is very knowledgeable about relationships even though he is not involved. She considers them the same and he starts blushing. He tries to avoid the topic, but she is still on it, saying he will know if he likes someone or not when he gets to know her better than what he thinks about her. He does not get and asks about it, but she declares it a joke and leaves him behind. At home, Setu enters his study room and finds a cane there, and it surprises her. She was there to ask him for recommendations of books, but it was Himari who requested that she ask about it. He passionately lets her have some books and informs her about them happily. He first shows some history books but gives her some philosopher books at her request. She does not why he is glad about it. He gives the reason that he never had anyone to share his impressions so looks forward to listening to her impressions. The next morning, Himari thanks Akane for letting her know about books he likes and goes to him to ask if he has read a certain book which is the same. One he talked about last night to Akane. Akane observes them from afar, Saitu and Himari seem very glad and very friendly. It makes Akane jealous. Shisai appears there saying she has known how to handle Sayu ever since she was a kid. He likes it when someone relies on him and loves teaching others. Akane should also know about and rely on him to make him happy, but Akane's ego comes in front and asks why she should make him happy. Shisai goes away with her friends afterward. Himari randomly starts to come after Satu for an explanation of some words. He does not consider her a bother at all and talking with her is pretty fun to him. He is repaying her for whenever he and Akane fight with each other. She has come to stop them. She exposes it was Akane who told her about this book because she wanted to talk more with him and know what he thinks. She tells him the story of elementary school time. Due to her hair color, she attracted some bad students who teased her, but it was a cane who helped her back then. Seitu gives his opinion that he does not find her color odd other than that he has not seen anyone with bright blonde looking good. Getting complimented by Seitu makes her happy. She talks about a cane again, that he and a cane suit each other. It was Akane who stood for her saying her color is beautiful, and those who are saying it's bad have no sense of it at all. It's because of Akane she was saved, and that's why she treasures a cane so much. A Kane seems to observe them from afar but cannot get what they are talking about. Sisei appears to her that Himari and Saitu look good together. Himari is a good person, so she is ready to accept a pompous person like Saito. Shisei asks Akane if she hates the fact that Himari and Saitu look good together. It puts Akane in so much confusion, she cannot feel jealous of a person she hates in the class. She considers it an imagination. Thinking further scares her so much. 